Hello everybody, today I will be teaching you all the first steps to using the Crunk Script Editor. I will be getting into what these scripts are, some of the basic fundamentals, as well as how to see your changes in-game. So first of all, let's just get ourselves a quick start going on. Now when you hover over the component tab, you will notice there is a new tab called Script. In the Script tab, when you click it, this will pop up. It is the new Crunk Script Editor window. Here, you will be able to edit your Crunker scripts for your client and your server. The difference between the client and server is that the client script only runs on the client, so it only runs for each person individually. The server script won't run unless it's in the hosted mode. So if you were to quick test your map, it will not work. And second, it will run for the whole server. Now, of course, if you wanted to update something on the server for everyone at the same time, you'll need to use stuff like network messages if you want to communicate between the client and server. This would be useful in the event of a moving object and or other similar endeavors with any sort of multiplayer features where the client will need to be updated at the same rate as every other client along the server. Before we begin, I would like to teach you all about what the different types of variables are. This is a string. The way you set it to something is by using quotation marks and then typing what you want it to say. A string basically consists of words, letters, numbers, and symbols. However, if you want to refer to a string, you must use quotation marks. This is a number, or an integer, as other languages call it. It is simply referred to without quotation marks as a number. This is valid. This is invalid. Can you guess why? Because the letter A is not a number. Since the letter A is not a number, this will be an invalid variable. You can only use numbers when referring to the number. This is an object. An object stores an object's data from the Crunker map that can be edited within the client. It can also be used to store players. You can get a player's object by setting it equal to game.players.findbySID. This will allow you to input a number and it will get you the player that is under that SID. However, if you wanted to get yourself as an object for the client, you would do game.players.getSelf. And this would return the character's object instead of another character's object. And if you wanted, it would make sense if you were to call this you, since it is you, the player. One more that I would like to touch on is the bool. A bool or boolean is basically a yes or no for a variable. If you wanted to have a boolean equal to something, you can only ever set it to true or false. This is great for when you want to have a simple on-off circuit. So if you wanted to test for something to be on, you could just simply do if is on equals false, then we can run whatever code we want for when it's false. And if you want it to be true, 
and we simply replace false with true. In this code, we'll only activate if the boolean is on is equal to true. Now that we've covered some basic variables, I'd like to teach you what actions are. An action is CrunkScript's version of a function. They act the same way that a function would, but they simply have a different name. Public actions are basically what the game allows anything to refer to. So another object can refer to this same script. This makes sense for stuff like public action on key press and public action on mouse click. To begin with, let's go from the top down on the client section. The public action for start will run when the game starts. It will not run anywhere else except for when the client is initialized. If you wanted to add a GUI element, that's when you would do it. And then we move on to the update action. This will run every time the game runs a tick. If I wanted to update a GUI, I could do it in here. Or if I wanted to fetch data every tick, I can simply run it in the public action update. This also returns the number for delta. Delta is basically the time between the ticks. And it allows you to, instead of rely on FPS, which can drop at random times and will not be consistent for each player, they can instead run it on delta time to ensure that everyone has the same performance. And here we see the same sort of thing, but for renders. And this allows you to mess with what you see when the game is fully rendered an image or a frame. You can add all sorts of new things such as GUI elements, canvas drawings, and more using the render function. Now when the user presses a key, we go on to our next action on key press. When the key is pressed, it returns the string for the key that was pressed and it activates the action on key press. If you want to do something like test what key was pressed, you'd simply do if key equals, make sure you use two equal signs. And now we put in our quotations for the string and then what key it was. So if I wanted to check if it was pressing the G key, I would just put one G in and that would be it. And now I can run whatever script I want in here. Now, very similar to on key press, we have two more functions related to keys. On key up is what happens when you release a key from holding it. So if you were holding down a button and then you release it, that's when it would happen, when you release. And when you hold a key, this action will be called and will return what key was held down. And you could check very similar through each of these with that same if key equals string. Next up, we will move on to the on mouse click action. On mouse click allows you to determine when the mouse buttons are clicked and where it was clicked. It will return what number the button was, so one, two, three, and it will return the X and Y coordinates as numbers for what X and Y on the screen where was the mouse clicked. And below that, we see another mouse control on mouse scroll. And it's the same sort of concept, except it only looks for the direction in which it scrolls and if it is scrolling at all. And if you wanted to have something happen when you scroll up, that's where you do it. You check if it's the scroll up direction. Next up, we have something that is great for all of us UI designers. We have on div clicked or div clicked. It will return the ID in a string for what the GUI element is referred to in the developer tools elements section. Now, when you create an element, you'll also be able to define what the ID is, and you can refer to it in Crunk Script. If you wanted to check what an element was that was clicked, you can do if ID equals and then the string. As an example, I will put in the normal default div0. 
This will happen for the first editor added GUI element, which is referred to as cus div zero. Finally, we reach the on network message action. This is used for networking across multiple clients. You'd use this if you want to communicate to the server and backwards between clients to send data from one person to another. It's great for adding multiplayer connections to a game. Now that we've covered everything in the client script, we will move on to the server script. And surprisingly, there's almost nothing in here. Why is that? Because most action runs on the client. The server instead is mainly for relaying details about player positions. You can also see at the bottom, we have another on network message, but this time it also has the player SID. The player SID is what allows the server to determine who is who. Who is player one? Who is player two? Who is player three? The reason why it only gets returned in the server is that the client does not need to know anything about who sent it. All it needs to know is that it was sent to them. Now that may be changed, but for now it is like this, where only the server will return the player SID. Again, an on-network message is great for when you want to simply relay messages between two different clients using the server. I will not be working on a tutorial for this, however, I am unfortunately going to have to say that. Now, let's say you finished up your scripting. Well, you'd very simply just go down to this button right here called Validate Script. What it will do is it will check your script and make sure you've made no errors, you've used correct punctuation, and you have no other problems that may arise during your testing. When you click this, it will say saving slash validating. In the background, you may see this pop-up that says script saved. And this is how you will save your data. If you do not save it, you risk losing any code you've written. Once you have saved and validated your work, you have no errors, then you're good to go and you can now hit map and host the map if you wanna make sure that every script works. As far as I know, running it in the test map will only result in all the scripting being turned off. In the next video, I will be going over GUI elements and scripting, as well as some advanced scripting. I hope you guys are hyped up for that. If you enjoyed this, I would actually appreciate it if you give me some support. Bye!